We get right into checking our homework on conservation momentum this morning, page 478. Any issues with question one and two that you were working on over the last two days? Yep. Number two? Okay. Yep. Yep, no worries. Uh, number one says a 0.25 kilogram volleyball is flying west at point at two meters per second when it strikes a stationary 0.58 kilogram basketball dead center. The volleyball rebounds east at 0.79. What's the velocity of the basketball immediately after your impact? Um, this term dead center, that means like right smack in the middle, right? Um, we're probably not even thinking about that, but that's actually kind of important. If it hits it kind of on a glancing collision as opposed to dead center, what happens to it? versus when it hits it dead center. Yeah, when it hits it dead center, things might bounce back, but it's going to keep going on the same axis, right? If it hits it on the side at an angle, then what's going to happen is you're going to have them kind of go off like pool balls or something like that, right? I'm sorry to interrupt you again. Can you speak to the teaching? Yes. All right, so what do we know about this question? What do we know about this question? Not one of my givens, but what's going on in this question? Volleyball is moving west. Oh, we know that. Okay, I don't like the west thing. Okay, might have to deal with that somewhere, but beyond that, what do we know about this? Volleyball collides with a basketball. Okay, basketball is at rest. They bounce off. What, what kind of problem is that? Volleyball rebounds, yes. It's conservation momentum. Now, impulse is technically valid here. You could use impulse if you were analyzing one object or the other, but if you're analyzing both of them, we're going to use conservation momentum. That is, if we have an isolated system. What do we mean by an isolated system again? Yep. Good. There's no external forces. There's nothing to cause more momentum to go into it, or there's no forces to cause momentum to be taken away from the system. Okay, and there's there's nothing that they talk about in here that would indicate that there's any external forces that are adding or taking away momentum from the system. All right. Now that we know that, now that we've got a, a better idea of the big picture of this question, let's write down some of the givens, because those are still important. It's just not the first thing we think of. We're going to say M1 is 0.25 kilograms. That's going to be the mass of the volleyball. Uh, we're going to say that M2, that's going to be the mass of the basketball, is 0 0.58 kilograms. Now, we've got uh, 2.0 meters per second here given to us. We've got something else is 0 0.79 meters per second. Tell me what the 2.0 meters per second is. Is that going to be V1 or V2, Peyton? That's going to be V1, the velocity of the volleyball going to be V1i or is it going to be V1f? It's going to be V1i, yeah. It's the initial velocity of the volleyball. Tell me what this 0 0.79 meters per second is. Yep. Okay, good. That was going to be a question later on, but you nailed it right now before I even asked the question. Um, yeah, that's going to be a negative value because it's to the west, right? The volleyball rebounds, so this is going to be V1 again, but it's going to be V1F because it's because it's after the collision takes place. Now, are we going to make that negative or positive, Peyton? That's positive because it's it's rebounding in the opposite direction. Now, it could be, you could define positive as the other way. This could be a positive 2, but if you did that, then your 0.79 would have to be a negative 0.79. doesn't really matter. Hey, I usually stick with um, east as positive and, and west as negative, right? Uh, what do we want to find here? The velocity of the basketball after impact, V2F. Is there anything else we have if we read between the lines? Greg? Good. And what is the initial velocity of the basketball, V1I? Good. It's at rest, right? Sometimes they tell us it's zero meters per second for that initial velocity. And sometimes they force us to read between the lines a little bit. Um, what they do here? It's a stationary basketball. All right. If we're going to analyze the system, and that's what we decided to do, then we're going to use PI as equal to PF. We're going to say that there's two objects before the collision takes place. Therefore, there's two terms for momentum before the collision takes place. M1V1I plus M2V2I. Now, do they stick together? 
No, if they did, we'd say it would be MVF, but they don't, so we're going to say M1V1F plus M2V2F. Now, if these two, uh, this basketball and this volleyball, had the same mass, uh, then we could cancel out the mass, right? But they don't, so we can't. That's okay. It just means a little bit of extra math, that's all. Let's plug in some numbers here. M1 is 0.25. V1I is negative 2. V2I, sorry, what is this? This should be V2I, shouldn't it? Not V1. Yeah, V2I is 0, so we'll just cross that term off. 0 0.25 times V1F. 0.79 plus 0.58 times V2F. Well, let's pull out the calculator there and plug in some numbers together to make sure we can do it. 0.5 times negative 2 gives me negative 4 on the left-hand side. Now, let's subtract from that uh, 0.25 times 0.79. Why do we subtract that? Why do we subtract 0 0.25 times 0 0.79? On the right-hand side, it's a positive value, right? So we have to take it to the left-hand side by making it a negative value, by subtracting it, correct? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, oh, so I made a mistake there, didn't I? Yeah, okay, let's, let's do that again then. 0 0.25 times negative 2 gives me negative 0.5. Let's subtract from that 0 0.25 times 0.79. That gives us negative 0 0.6975, which we turn around and divide that by 0.58, gives us negative 1.20. And for us, since we made east positive, then this is going to be a, this negative value means it's to the west. Yeah. Go ahead. V1F negative. If you made V1F negative and V1I negative? Yes, that would work as well. Yes. Yeah. So you're just defining it opposite to the way I define the direction, right? If you say V1I is positive, V1F is negative, then you're saying east is negative and west is positive. And that's fine. It's not it's never the way that I do it. Okay, but it's and it's and it's not the normal way of doing it, but it's okay. You can define direction any way you want. The definition of, of positive negative direction is completely arbitrary. It's just you know, more often than not, people use east as positive, so it's kind of more convention, but it's arbitrary. Your answer, though, wouldn't be negative 1.2, right? Your answer would be... Okay, but it would be positive, though, right? Okay, so if you go 1.3, it's probably a rounding thing, but the positive is correct if you define the direction opposite to the way I did. Right? All right, let's have a look at question number two now. This one says a 95-kilogram rail flat car moving forward at 0.7 meters per second strikes a stationary 18,000-kilogram boxcar, causing it to move forward at 0.42. What's the velocity of the flat car immediately after the collision if they fail to connect? Um, no funny units here. I don't even. I don't think there's any funny directions here, is there? Everything's forward. Okay, that's good. So what's going on here? Picture it. Hey, okay. it sounds silly sometimes, but like, it, it is sometimes helpful to literally picture a rail yard where these two things are colliding, okay? You've got this flat car moving this way, slowly. There's a box car sitting here. The rail car hits the box car. It says they don't couple. They don't stick together. So this is what's going on. Rail car hits the box car bounces off at two different speeds. This is a collision in which the law of conservation of momentum applies. So let's write down some givens now that we recognize that. M1 is 9,500 kilograms, and we're going to say uh, M2 is 18,000 kilograms. By the way, what would happen if you decided to make the rail car M2 and the box car M1? Would that change anything? Not at all. Just change the order in which you wrote down the numbers in your equation, right? 
not going to change the answer. Uh, something is 0 0.70 meters per second. Something is 0.42 meters per second. And we're looking for something. Tell me what's 0.7. Is it V1 or is it V2, Dom? V1, good. It's it's the uh, rail, the flat car. Is it V1I or V1F? It's V1I, good. And 0.42, what's that going to be? Strikes a stationary box car, causing it to move forward. What's it? Matt? Yeah, that's going to be V2, V2I or V2F. Good. After the collision, it moves forward at 0.42 meters per second. What's the velocity of the flat car immediately after? We're looking for V1F here, right? All right, let's say PI equals PF. It's a collision. Momentum is conserved, right? We got two objects before this collision takes place, the rail car and the flat car. So we got two terms. And then after it takes place, we also have two. All right, so we can't cancel at the masses here because they're not the same. Even though M1 appears on both sides and M2 appears on both sides, it's got to, the number has to appear in every term to cancel it. So we're going to say 9,500 here for, for M1. V1I is 0.7. Uh, this, oh, wait a second. What's V2I? Yeah, good. We missed that one, right? V2I is 0 meters per second. All right, M1 is 9,500. Again, V1F is, uh, that's what we're looking for, plus M2, 18,000, times V2F, 0.42. Everything is positive here, right? Okay, so we're going to say 9,500 times 0.7. And we're going to subtract brackets 18,000 times 0.42. Gives me a number on the left-hand side, negative 910. Divide that by 9,500. And we end up getting negative 0.095. That's not the answer. What have I done wrong there? You guys see my mistake there? 9,500 times 0.7. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong answer there. So, V1F uh, ends up being equal to negative 0 0.096 meters per second, which, of course, means it's backwards. If we define forwards as positive, which I think probably everybody would in this question. Right? Let's take a look at one more for the football players out here. Page 479, it says a 110-kilogram Stampeders football fullback moving east at 1.8. I was struck by 140-kilogram Eskimos defensive lineman. 140 kilograms is literally twice my size. Literally twice my size. A defensive lineman moving west at 1.5 meters per second. We got an east and a west thing I probably want to draw attention to here, right? Even before we look at what's going on in the problem, I noticed that, so I want to draw attention to it so that I don't forget it later on when I'm focusing on other things. The fullback bounces west at 0.25 meters per second. What's the velocity of the Eskimos defensive lineman just after impact? Uh, all right, what do we know about this? Two football players coming at each other. They collide. They bounce off of each other. Hey, that's a collision, right? That's a conservation of momentum problem. So we're going to say uh, PI equals PF. But let's write down our givens first. We're going to say M1, the Stampeders player, is 110 kilograms. M2, the Eskimos player, 140 kilograms. What else we got here? Uh, 1.80 meters per second. What else we got? Uh, 1.50 meters per second. And we got 0 0.250 meters per second. Tell me what the 1.8 is. Is that V1 or is that 
V2. Yeah, it's going to be V1. It's the velocity of the Stampeders player. But is it V1i or is it V1f? It's i. Good. It's initial velocity of the Stampeders player. Good. What's the 1.5 meters per second? Struck by D Eskimos defensive lineman moving at 1.5. That looks like V2, doesn't it? Object number two, the, the Eskimos player. V2. Is it V2i or is it V2f? Is it before he collides or is that after he collides? Jotham? Yeah, good, V2i. Uh, 0.25, the fullback bounced west. The full, Who's the fullback? The Stampeders player bounced west. The Stampeders player bounced west. Is that V1 or V2? Yep. It's V1. It's the Stampeders player, right? Is it V1i or is it V1f? It's going to be V1F. Good. And we're looking for, what are we looking for here? V2F. I'm telling you, you're doing these concentration momentum problems, the givens are, are it, right? It, that's the hard part. Once you get past the givens, it's just math once you get past the givens. Um, the givens can be a little hard to identify. There is uh, a couple typos, little mistakes up there. Everybody spot what they are? Small things, but important. What am I missing up here? Yeah, I circled it in red so I wouldn't forget it, right? Honestly, I was about to wrote, write down PI equals PF there. I was about to actually forget it. Not to demonstrate something. I was about to actually forget the directions, positives and negatives. But I remembered. Why? Because I circled it in red. Okay, That's what I do because it's doesn't mean I'm not going to forget it, but I'm less likely to forget it if I draw attention to it. All right, so we're going to say V1i is positive. We're going to say V2i is negative, and we're going to say V1f is negative as well. Now we're good to go. Now we can say PI equals PF. Now we can say M1 V1i plus M2 V2i equals two objects afterwards, M1 V1f plus M2 V2F. Uh, M1, 110. V1I, 1.80. M2, 140. Times, be careful here, negative 1.5. Careful with this one as well, negative 0.25. All right, let's get the left side. Let's say 110 times 1.8. Let's say add that to 140 times negative 1.5. Use the brackets there. Gives me negative 12 on the left-hand side. Let's add to that 110 times 0.25. We're adding it because it's a negative on the right side. Sorry, a, a negative on the right side comes over to the left side as a positive. And let's divide that by 140. 0.111. I think that was positive. Yeah. How is this question similar to what we've done before? Well, it's concentration of momentum. It's a collision between two objects. It's... Um, it's uh, PI equals PF, M1, MV for every object that we have both before and after. How's it different? Not much at all, but yes. The first type of problem that we did involving concentration momentum, uh, we had two objects hitting each other, they stuck together. Then the second type of problem we did, we had an object hitting another stationary object, they bounce apart. Now we've got another object hitting another moving object, and they bounce apart. So there's a little bit of a difference to it, but fundamentally it's still the same question, right? And that's what we've got to remember. Okay, we're going to see twists. We can deal with those. Okay, just don't panic. Just deal with the question as we have these example questions, and you should be good. All right. You've got about 10 minutes to finish up these two questions on page 479. I think you should finish those in class here. Your homework over the break 
is, of course, your lab that's due on Wednesday, and due next Monday, nine days from now, is worksheet number three. So you got a little bit of homework, but it's not like it's going to take you hours upon hours. Basically, it's two nights of homework, right? You got a lab that you can do in a half an hour, and you got a worksheet that you're going to do in a half an hour. 